Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be playing with some high chromatics watercolor in my Pipa Word journal. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so I got this from my brother. Now in the coloring book community, I've been seeing a ton of people um, use, purchase and showcase I want to say it's art spirits, watercolors, they're metallic ones, they're handmade, they're beautiful. They're also quite pricey. I, I didn't realize how pricey they would be until I did my own research. I'm like, I, and then I was on Instagram and I had seen this company do some advertising, uh, spoiler they're also pricey. Um, but I asked for this for Christmas from my brother and he actually spoiled me and got two different sets. Now, when I got it for Christmas, it was already in the pan and it does have one of these little finger thingies and it was already unwrapped. So I couldn't show you or do an unboxing of what this looks like when it's all in the paper and when i look at the different pots none of them have names on it but i will link the shop below and if i can remember which ones i told him i'll also link which these two sets are i did choose um ones that were metallic-y in nature and i've actually used uh, some of this already but I think they are so beautiful. I don't know if these are half pans or full pans. I, I'd have to look online to see what it was. I, I'd have to ask him. And it, because it was a gift, I didn't get the invoice with it. But they are just beautiful. They are bound with honey. And they just, they smell amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sniffing my paint. Now, this is an uh, Archer and Olive Pipa collaboration. This is an eight by eight sketchbook. Now I totally um, purchased this in the most stupid manner possible in that I purchased this in the beginning of November of 2021. I had seen it. I instantly won it. So I went and ordered it. And then like 10 days later, they had a fabulous um, Black Friday sale. So with I think Pipa's code because she has a YouTube channel I'll link her below uh, you could get 10% off Archer and Olive and at the time I thought oh that's fantastic and then like I said literally 10 days later Archer and Olive was offering 40% off basically their entire shop so yeah I felt a little bummed I reached out and they're like well you know we had enough information out there to let you guys know that Black Friday was coming up and we'd be offering something spectacular. So too bad, so sad was essentially the the vibe that I got. So uh, lesson learned. I mean, I, I've had mixed feelings about Arch and Olive, so much about the quality of their products, but more about stuff like that. So if I do ever order from Archer and Olive again, and uh, I don't know that I would, but if I do, I'll wait till Black Friday of next year, or no, this year, it is 2022, and see if the deals are worth that. <laughs> but it is a beautiful journal. So this is the um, uh, cover art that she had created for her journal, and this is the back of it. I thought it was absolutely spectacular. It's pricey for a sketchbook, but this is really what sold me on it. As soon as you open it up, this is how it comes. So this is a message from Pipa, and then she gives you an idea of how you can use this. It is a blank notebook. It is not dot grid. It is not lined. And so it really is a sketchbook. It isn't necessarily made for watercolor, but it does hold up to it, although it doesn't behave um, as watercolor paper would. So the way that she explains it, and again, you can check out her channel for her doing an unboxing of this. Uh, this can just be a one-off where you just write this in, or this can be sort of a template on how you um, use this book. I'm not going to use it this way, but I do like seeing it on here. And I'm assuming this is her actual handwriting. And so I, I just, I like seeing writing on a page, even if it's not my own. This is going to stay blank. I don't do this kind of stuff where I write down things like that because it just, just seems nosy to me. <laughs> I know it's weird, but that's how I am. 
So I, when I purchased it, I didn't know what I was going to use it for. And then I realized, you know what, I'm going to do a word journal. And so this is the cover page. Uh, this I did with these paints here. Um, I plan to just use these paints in here. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to be using any other kind of watercolor medium in here. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a slight shimmer on here. I did start this December 2021 and then I did some hand lettering um, with one of my Pentel Touch pens. And so this is the very first spread that I did. Uh, the word for this page is bum fuzzle. I know it's weird but there are actually funny words out there and that's what I plan for this to be. Um, a, a journal full of kind of watercolor and some weird words. And so that actually means something that means to confuse, perplex, or flustered. I did this on Christmas Eve when I got this. Um, in my family, we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. As you can see, there is a little bit of warping to the page. Again, this is never marketed as watercolor paper because watercolor paper may not necessarily do this, um, but it does not bleed, you can see. And this is the second page that I did, and this is absquatulate absquatulate and that means run away usually includes taking something or somebody along I guess more like Thelma and Louise I've never seen that movie so I don't know if that's the correct reference but that's the word there and then this one here oh and again I don't know if you can see it but there is a shine to it and then the uh, word here which is the last one that I've done is mill drop and that means a drop of mucus hanging or falling from a person's nose so now you know what that is and even this black is from this set and there is a subtle shine and so I've got this in here because I've been using some of this on the pages and so for the actual word I'm going to put on here I did get this as a part of ephemera for my creative studio or your creative studio that's what it's called this is a sticker sheet from my stash and uh, let's see we've used black and green i guess that's the coppery color and browns pink and green so let's go for some blues as you can see i don't have a plan I've got these two Arteza water brushes. They've got these little push things here. I don't have a little pot of water next to me because why would I be prepared like that? But what I'm going to do is squeeze this. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to put some water on here. I didn't get instructions, so I don't know if I'm supposed to prep it like that, but why not? And don't want to always do the same thing. So let's, let's just do a wash of water. On here, because watercolor does like to move as a wash on water. So that's called the wet on wet. Let's go for this here. These remind me of mermaids. I don't know why. With the lights, I can't really see the water Although, I don't really see a difference on those two colors right there. Oh, okay, well I definitely see a difference there. Okay, now I'm going to tilt the page. Oh. I don't know if you guys can see that, <laughs> but I like it. Oh, 
おおおおAnd you see where it's dry, it doesn't want to move, so it's automatically going to dam up. And you can use that to your advantage. I don't know how well you guys can see this. Now you don't want to put too much water and you don't want to work it too much because it's not watercolor paper. It will pill and I don't necessarily mind the it, that it scrunches up. Sorry, working something like this and talking isn't necessarily the easiest thing for me. Now, because the way that I did it, it definitely is more washed out. You don't get a very even coat. I've never tried this in a coloring book yet, so I don't know how well it coats evenly like that. But for this purpose, this is actually exactly what I want from it. So that is actual a win for me. And I'm going to leave this out for now, but I'm going to look up a word and I'm going to let this air dry. So for you guys, uh, it's going to be pretty instantaneous. Oh, I didn't put a blotter sheet, but luckily don't need one. I don't know if I'm going to come back with a little bit more pigment once this dries, but I am going to look up a word that's going to go on this page and I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, guys, it's not totally dry, but it's dry enough for me for right now. And I think I am going to add a little bit more. But I didn't wet it purposefully just to add some squiggles. And you can see that it does have that different effect when the paper is dry, so it doesn't want to move. So if you're looking for something more of a wash than putting water down first and then your watercolor on top, it's definitely going to move better. If you want to be very particular on placement, then you would just do the wet paint on dry. With coloring books or something like this, the less water you use, the more intense the pigment's going to be. Um, these look to be sheer anyway. Again, I haven't used this in a coloring page to add the primary color. I have used this just a little bit to add some shimmer to a page. But I don't know if you can see it, but there definitely is a, a sparkle to it. It's absolutely gorgeous and it smells good. All right, so I'm going to put my word down here and the word that I found and I just look up funny words and it comes out on a list is finny fugal and that is an adjective and that means hating and endings. Um, someone who tries to avoid or prolong the final moment of a story, relationship, or other journey. So I'm just going to put that down with some double-sided tape. I'm not going to close this since it isn't dry, but that corner is, and so I can put this down. I don't have one of those heat guns. I can get one, but I don't, I don't feel the need for it. I don't mind just putting this to the side while it dries. But I will put this down here. I am going to put a little bit of washi just to add some decorative element and because I've done it on the other pages I do have quite a bit of washi and so I just need to go in my stash and find something that kind of fits the color scheme. Put that there and there. I don't want to cover up the text. And then I have this really beautiful sparkly one. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of this.
And because I'm only working on one side, it doesn't matter if I bulk this up uh, because it doesn't affect the, the next page at all. And I could use more of this and I have, uh, but I just, I want just a little touch of it here and there. Okay. Actually, that looks kind of funny because it looks all lined up. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to deal with funny then. Oh no, we can take this one up. Okay. And maybe we'll put it right here. Again, I don't want to cover up what that means. Oh, I don't like that either. <laughs> I'm usually not this fussy. Okay. And then here, we'll add some of these stickers. They're not necessarily part of our color scheme, but they will take up some of the space right there. And because they're washy, they just kind of fade into the paper itself. And there you go. I am going to let this dry. That is it. I'm not adding anything additional to it. I like the look of it. Um, it's just random. Some of these, like here, I did add some line work on top of it, but I do like the look of a watercolor wash. And this this is just pretty to me. And that's it. If you guys would like to see more of this, me just playing around with this uh, watercolor palette and just doing some, just slight bit of collage, let me know in the comments below. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me for now. And as always, aloha.